A city news investigation finds if a person is sexually assaulted, where that assault takes place could determine what kind of justice they get in the courts. We've been crunching these numbers for months now, and they show Toronto could be one of the most difficult places for a victim to get justice they seek in the courts. There are many complex reasons behind these numbers, and we'll get into them right now after, and later we'll be showing you some analysis as to why. I know that I was raped. I experienced a trauma. I've been living with it for two years. But Rosalind Talisan doesn't believe she received justice. She says she went to Toronto police after the man she had been dating refused to wear a condom the first time they had intercourse. And even though she says she asked him to stop numerous times, he didn't. Detectives charged him with sexual assault, but six months later, the Crown told her there wasn't a good prospect of a conviction. And they said, okay, we're going to withdraw the charge. And I cried. I cried in the room with them. But according to all these numbers, Rosalind only had about a 50-50 chance her case would proceed after a crown took the file. City News has obtained these records which detail every sexual assault case in Ontario that made it to court over the past five years. And they paint a startling picture of discrepancies. For example, in Toronto, more sex assault cases are dropped by the Crown either before or during a trial than any other large jurisdiction in the province. Almost half, 48%, have been withdrawn or stayed since 2012. In other words, dropped. To put that into context for you, if a woman is sexually assaulted on this side of the border in Toronto, the chance of her case being dropped is significantly higher than if she was sexually assaulted on this side of the border in Mississauga. The stats show over the past five years, sexual assault cases are dropped in Toronto courts 11% more than in Brampton courts where Mississauga cases are tried. Now compare that to other jurisdictions. Timmins has the lowest average for dropping sex assault cases at 22%. Ottawa's rate is 26, London and Guelph, 35. Why would it matter where you live? And it's not like the trauma or like the pain is different if you live in the suburbs than if you live in the city. But there are even more discrepancies. Toronto also has one of the lowest trial rates for sex assault cases in the province at 25%, which means on average only one in four cases even makes it to trial. Ottawa, Milton, Sarnia and Windsor all have among the highest. More than 40% of alleged victims have their cases heard before a judge. And there is another puzzling inconsistency. Sex assault suspects in Toronto are among the least likely to plead guilty. On average, only 12% of cases end with guilty pleas. Kitchener has the highest guilty plea rate at 37%. That's unacceptable. There should not be uh, geographical limits on the criminal code. The question is why. There is no easy answer. It's difficult to back away from the very uncomfortable and frankly unacceptable truth that the numbers uh, present. So that has to be a real starting point for some deep dives into what's going on, why is it going on, and why are people being disserved based on the random fact of where they happen to live. More now in our City News investigation into how sex assault cases are treated differently jurisdiction by jurisdiction across the province. We've been speaking to multiple people who work in the justice system about this for weeks now and it's clear there's no one real answer that explains the discrepancies. We'll begin our analysis with a former Crown attorney who now works with sex assault victims. Why would there be such a discrepancy across the province, jurisdiction by jurisdiction, on how sex crime cases are treated in the courts? Yeah, and there are many factors that could contribute to that. But one key uh, component is that Crown Attorney's offices operate in silos. They are independent, uh, jurisdiction by jurisdiction offices that make their own decisions about their own cases. Lawyer Alvin Shedlowski has spent almost 30 years defending sex assault suspects. He agrees some, but not all cases, can be treated differently depending on where the alleged assault took place. I'd be surprised, I'd be shocked, if the offenses at the very serious end of the spectrum are being treated differently by any Crown Attorney's Office, by any police force anywhere in the province. 
where I think you get this wide discrepancy is how the more minor uh, assaults, or more minor sexual assault offenses are being treated. David Butt believes the discrepancies would largely center around the murkier sex assault cases, ones where there was some kind of relationship with a suspect, a he said, she said scenario, always difficult to prove, especially if alcohol was involved. Different people will come, come at that kind of case with attitudes towards female sexuality that are frankly archaic outmoded, discriminatory, and they'll say, well, she was looking for it or she deserved it. Almost half, 48% of sex assault cases in Toronto have been dropped on average by the Crown over the past five years. That's the highest of any other major jurisdiction in the province. That percentage also includes cases where alleged victims have refused to testify. It's no secret that, frankly, the uh, criminal justice system is horrifically inhospitable to a sexual assault complainant. A high backlog in Toronto courts could also mean cases are being triaged and vetted more aggressively or alleged victims don't want to wait up to a year and a half for a trial. For some, justice may be lost through attrition. It might be that, um, you know, in the city of Toronto, the police are laying far more charges on the less serious side of the spectrum. Um, and so it makes it look like when those get withdrawn, there's lots that are being withdrawn. These reams of stats also beg the question about the discrepancy in guilty pleas across the province and the varying number of cases that go to trial. The whole point of these stats is that they raise questions that have to be answered. Do you feel like you got any sense of justice at all? Absolutely not. Rosalind is the human face behind all these numbers. The man she accused of rape during a date in Toronto had the charges against him dropped after he agreed to take a course in sexually transmitted diseases. My issue was the fact that he didn't understand consent. And that is like the fundamental issue of sexual assault, like not understanding consent. We're going to continue this conversation tomorrow. I take my findings to the Attorney General. I also talked to a woman who went through the court system and how she explains that being on the stand was actually harder than the actual assault. And if you want to see the numbers, you can go to our website, citynews.ca. There's an interactive map that will show you what the sex crime assault cases look like in the courts, region by region.